This is the fourth screencast in my series on parameterizations and here we're going to consider an important subject that is to say spirals, spiraling. I'm going to consider two examples but the but the ideas are more general. The first is the following for parameterization r of t is equal to a t cosine t a t sine t that t is greater than or equal to zero. So the emphasis here in this section is on the following idea that what I have here is a cosine t and a sine t and the coefficient as it were in front of this the pre the prefactor in front of the cosine and the sine is the same for both for x and y. Right? And so the way to think about this is you think about this as a radius which is a function of t. So I'll put that in quotes. Radius is a function of t. That is to say, if this were just a constant, if this were just a constant, this would describe a circle, and a circle being traced in the counterclockwise direction. So there's a counter kind of counterclockwise rotation due to this cosine and sine term, and but then there's the, the radius, which here is not constant. So let's look specifically in this case, we see that uh, in fact this this radius term is simply equal to a t. So we can plot this. Let me start to do that. Oh no, all right, so let's do it here. Now, uh, let me just start with, so let's find a couple points on here. We'll start with one point on here. I want to, uh, ideally you think you'd go to where, where t is equal to zero, because then I, I'm, I don't, if I, this were just a circle, that would correspond to, um, to this point on the x-axis, but when t is equal to zero here, this radius is zero. So in fact, I'll go once around and I'll go to that t is equal to two pi. Hopefully that made sense. So I'm gonna make a little, let's just make a little table over here. So I'll let t be equal to 2 pi, and then my r will be equal to a times 2 pi, so 2 pi a. Hopefully I haven't made a mistake. So that'll be this point here, I'll assume there. That's 2 pi a. So there I am when t is equal to 2 pi. Again, let's just for the moment assume that this radius was, was constant, then I would go increase uh, t by uh, 2 pi, go from 2 pi to 4 pi, and if radius were a constant, I would simply trace out a circle. Probably not a regular circle, but there it is. I just trace out a circle. But in fact, what's going to happen is this, this radius is going to increase, and the radius is going to increase from 2 pi to 4 pi a. So it will go, I will go from, I should have made this axis longer, but I'll just go ahead and put it on here. It'll be 4 pi a, and I might as well go ahead and put 6 pi a, which is where I'm going to go to next. And now I will extend this axis. So now I want to attempt to draw my curve. We'll do an attempt here. So I'm going to start here. This probably won't be very good. I'm going to start here. Does everybody see where I am? I'm going to start here and I'm going to go once around. Let me just point first. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go once around and I have to end up there. Then I'll go around again and I'm going to end up there. So as I say, it probably won't be very good, but I'll give it a go. Ready? Set and I'll make a pull too. Ready, set, go. So R is increasing as T is increasing, and I end up here. And then I'm going to go around again. So T is increasing, theta is increasing, as it were, and I go around to there, and I will continue in that, uh, in that same way. That's why I'm thinking about Let's go ahead and put my arrows on there, indicating. I'll draw several of them. They're all going the same way, indicating the orientation of the curve. In fact, though, I started here at, at t equal 2 pi, but um, I can go down all the way to t equal 0, of course, t equal 0, and, bold, and r will then be equal to 0. So let me just draw that part of the curve. So that part of the curve corresponds to one final turn, which I'll now draw in the backward sense to the orientation, but then I end up at the origin. The orientation is still the same way. That is to say, as t increases, as t increases, I start at the origin, I wind out, and I wind out, and I wind out, and I continue. Okay. Each with each wind, I increase the radius by a by a fixed amount, two pi a. Any of you will know this is an Archimedean spiral. No, I won't put a box around it. Anyway, there it is, an Archimedean spiral. And it's often described, and you, I'll let you work out that it's the same. It's often described as a curve for which the r in polar coordinates r is equal to a theta in polar coordinates. And 
I will be discussing pull coordinates in the next screencast, so I'll, I'll wait and discuss that then. I have here a picture of an Archimedean spiral drawn with MATLAB, and um, I will put, I suppose, I'll put the little uh, MATLAB M file that I used to generate this uh, on the web page, and you can generate it yourself. But you can see here quite clearly it starts here at the origin and whops, wrap, wraps around, I'll leave that on there, it wraps around um, increasing the radius by equal spaces each, um, each, turn of the, uh, each turn of the spiral. Okay, so that's an Archimedean spiral. I'm just going to break this, um, this subject in, into two and pause here and come back on the, um, on the next screencast and continue it.